Hey everybody, I'm David Gura at MSNBC headquarters in New York. It is 3 p.m. here on the East Coast and it is noon out west. Ice storm. President Trump goes after Democrats calling for ice to be abolished, claiming that would lead to crime that would be rampant, in his words, and uncontrollable. A civil action, what if anything, can be done to tamp down the volatile rhetoric in American politics today? And confronting Putin, what Democrats and Republicans want President Trump to discuss with Russia's leader at this month's summit in Helsinki. So I'm concerned by what I hear. I'm concerned when the president tweets, uh, you know, Russia denies they meddled in our election. When they say they didn't meddle, they're lying. So I'm glad the president is going to confront Putin. Show him the evidence you got, Mr. President, because it's overwhelming. We'll begin this afternoon with President Trump defending ICE amid calls from some Democrats to abolish the agency. The president writing this on Twitter, quote, the liberal left, also known as the Democrats, want to get rid of ICE to do a fantastic job and want open borders. Crime would be rampant and uncontrollable. President Trump says he believes getting rid of ICE would lead to Democratic losses in the midterms. I hope they keep thinking about it because they're going to get beaten so badly. You get rid of ICE, you're going to have a country that you're going to be afraid to walk out of your house. Mm. I love that issue if they're going to actually do that. Joining me now is Elena Plot. She's a staff writer for The Atlantic. Anita Kumar is a White House correspondent for McClatchy. And Jason Johnson is the politics editor at TheRoot.com and an MSNBC political contributor. Anita, let me start with you and this issue of abolishing ICE. We heard from Senator Kirsten Gillibrand a couple of days ago calling for this. Uh, how much steam has this movement gotten? In other words, how many lawmakers roughly are pushing for the uh, abolition of this agency, this part of the Department of Homeland Security? Right. It's actually gotten pretty quick here that uh, more and more Democrats are supporting. It's still not the overwhelming number of them, but it is gaining steam in just the last few days. And it's, it's a bit of a risky move just because, as the president has alluded to, it's not that ICE deals only with deportation, and that seems to be what Democrats are talking about, the deportation part. But ICE actually does other things. It deals with traffic, trafficking and smuggling and other things, and he's talking about um, these other crimes. Uh, Elena, let me turn to you on this point. Uh, there has been a hunger here for Washington to do something in light of what we've seen. Obviously, this is running on many channels. We're seeing it in the courts. We're seeing it in policy. We're seeing it in politics uh, as well. How would this change the situation that we've seen develop here over these last few months? Uh, the 2047 children separated from their parents still. Uh, the issues with this zero tolerance program that's been implemented by this president. Well, the problem is, is and, and this is what I think you're going to see going into midterms, abolishing ICE doesn't actually, you know, eradicate a lot of the issues we're seeing at the border today. Um, you saw Senator Amy Klobuchar tell Martha Raddatz, I think it was yesterday, that, you know, Democrats do maybe need to tamp down this, uh, you know, activism if they can, because the problem is not necessarily the enforcement, it's the policies themselves. So I think if Democrats want a more beneficial narrative going into midterms, they should, they, you know, you know, they have plenty of material when it comes to Donald Trump's immigration policies, not ICE itself. Uh, Jason Johnson, I'm going to pull up a, a little bit from an article here in the Washington Post to the headline being a political suicide march. Uh, that quoting a White House aide who thinks the Democrats having this kind of debate is going to doom them in the elections. We heard from the president there at the top talking about this uh, as well. What's your sense of how smart a strategy this is for Democrats to be pursuing the, the abolition of ICE? I am always amused when people keep wanting to get advice from their adversaries. Like, whenever the Republicans are like, don't do that, don't yeah. throw me in that briar patch, why should the Democrats listen? Look, this you can pat your head and rub your tummy. The Democrats need as many messages as possible to galvanize their base. They need a message about the Supreme Court. They need a message about abortion. They need a message about immigration. They need a message about ICE. There's no one message that's going to bring everybody out, but as, as many as you bring to the table are going to be successful. And here's the thing about ICE in general. Yes, it's relatively recent. It came after 9-11. ICE under this administration is a dangerous operation. We had the INS before. There are ways that you can deport people who have come into this country illegally. Screaming that we want to abolish ICE by the Democrats is no dumber than Republicans saying they want to get rid of the Department of Education or the IRS, and that never hurt them at the polls, so why should the Democrats stop? Uh, Anita, the Democrats need a message, according to Jason Johnson. I think it's safe to say the Republicans do as well, particularly when it comes to immigration policy and immigration legislation. I just want to pull up two tweets from the president here uh, side by side. One that he fired off yesterday saying, I never pushed the Republicans in the House to vote uh, for the immigration bill, either good lat one or two. And of course, those are the two bills that failed in the House over these last couple of weeks. 
Just go back four days to what the president tweeted there in all caps. House Republicans should pass the strong but fair immigration bill known as Good Lat 2. Uh, how much clarity is on the Republican position when it comes to immigration? Right. Well, let's be clear. The president did push uh, Republicans and push the House to pass that bill. In all caps. He, yeah. <laughs> well, it was. it's beyond tweets. I mean, he went to Capitol Hill. He talked to lawmakers about it. He invited some of them over to the White House to talk to them about it. Sarah Sanders, his spokesperson, said he called lawmakers about it. Obviously, he also, also tweeted. So, I mean, he did push that bill, but I think he also knew, like many of us, that it probably was not going to pass. He uh, tends to do this thing where after something fails, he says, well, I never really support it in the first place. It's not the first time he's done that. Um, but, you know, he, but he did push that bill. He did want immigration uh, to be talked about. He thinks it's a good issue for Republicans, and he didn't mind that it was out there. Uh, there were these big protests across the country yesterday, Elena Plott. Uh, there were protests in Washington earlier in the week. You had more than 500 individuals arrested in the Hart Senate office building protesting there. Uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth was one of those who was protesting, and she was talking with Jake Tapper on CNN uh, this morning. Let's take a listen to what she had to say about this issue of, of abolishing ICE. You abolish ICE now, you still have the same president with the same failed policies. Um, whatever you replace it with is just going to still reflect what this president wants to do. So no, you don't support abolishing ICE? I, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of other things we can do before we get to that point. And Elena, we were talking last hour uh, about a piece in the Daily Beast indicating that there, uh, the Hispanic caucus uh, is not in favor of abolishing ICE. There's clearly division on Capitol Hill on this issue, division among Democrats. I want to ask you about these protests. Your takeaway from what we saw yesterday, your takeaway from that protest that I mentioned on Capitol Hill earlier this week. My take is that, I mean, I, I think there, there's the same fervor among those activists that you saw in Donald Trump's actual campaign to um, build the wall. And, the pro you know, the problem, of course, is that there's little chance that things like this actually get translated into legislation. So I do agree with Jason. I mean, if you, if you can, you know, use this to get turnout in November, great. Um, but, uh, you know, as with building the wall, we, you know, I just spent a week watching Republicans stymie themselves for for the probably fourth time this year on trying to get border wall funding to the amount that Donald Trump wants. So even with healthy majorities in both the House and Senate, Republicans can't even get their immigration agenda enacted to kind of, you know, fancy that abolish, abolishing ICE is something that lawmakers can genuinely seek or look forward to right now, you know, falls in the same sort of line of fantasy. Jason Johnson, there can be all kinds of urgency across this country, and it seems like as soon as it hits the beltway, it, it diminishes. Uh, and you look at the reaction to what we saw, what we've seen at the U.S.-Mexico border, at these families being separated, children being shipped all over this country, and then you look at what happened on Capitol Hill with that legislation. You look at uh, how much confusion there still is, how much uncertainty there still is from a policy perspective. What's the cure for that? You've got this president saying... Don't worry, we'll wait till the midterms. You got Democrats maybe looking ahead to the midterms as well. There is a need for there to be some action more immediately than that. Yeah, there, there is a need, David. It's just not going to happen. Look, Mitch McConnell's not going to do anything um, because most of these guys, they're perfectly happy with this policy. They're bad. They're upset about the imagery. They're bad about how it's polling, but they don't have a problem ripping the families apart. They don't have an issue with this. They sat back and let this happen. So I think both sides are sort of crossing their fingers. Republicans that, look, our base is going to be happy with what Trump is doing and will do well in the midterms. The Democrats are hoping for the same thing. There will be absolutely no solution to the immigration crisis anytime this year mm -hmm. and probably not during this presidency. And I, and I warn this, and I think this is really important. Anybody who thinks that their party has an advantage on this issue needs to look at every single individual congressional race because immigration plays out very differently in Ohio than it does in Texas. And it plays out differently with Texas, uh, with Democrats in Southern California than it does with Democrats in Northern Virginia. So you can't even say that these are universal winners or universal losers. Uh, Anita Kumar, on that point, uh, you had the president very reluctantly seemingly changing his position on these family separations, but he did do it. Uh, as this week begins, uh, as he returns to the White House from this weekend in New Jersey, um, what's he focused on when it comes to, to immigration? Does he still think that he can move past this because he signed that executive order as all the while this stuff is working its way through legal uh, channels? How has his thinking on this issue changed, if at all? 
Well, there have been so many things that's ha that has happened since that time last week. Obviously, the Supreme Court, and he's got other things. He's he's getting ready to go on another trip for about a week to Europe, and uh, you mentioned uh, the Vladimir Putin meeting. So he's got a lot of other things on his mind. I think one of the things he welcomed was that some of those things that we just talked about, or I just mentioned, got these these things off the front page. But clearly, there were huge protests yesterday. He's going to have watched that on television. He's going to see that. But at the moment, you know, with the bill failing in the House and no prospects for that to go forward, I think they're sort of moving on in terms of they have backtracked a bit on their zero tolerance uh, policy. They're, they're not going to prosecute um, all adults that cross the border with children. Um, now, uh, his administration, the pressure's on, though, to reunite these parents. They've got a court order to do that. And that's for, sort of for the administration to deal with. I don't know that he's going to be worried about that too much. The D Department of Health and Human Services, his Depart DHS, they're going to have to go figure out how to deal with it. With so many things, what happens uh, at the White House is the president will say something, and there are not a lot of procedures in place to go ahead and get things done. And his administration is left kind of scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. And that's going to be one of these. This is one of those issues. And Elena, last question to you on that point. You look at the transcript from uh, the, that court decision, uh, that injunction that was put in place, and you had a judge remarking on how reactive this government has been. We talk about forethought when it comes to policy. How about forethought when it comes to legal strategy? Uh, the, the, the administration has its hands full here trying to reunite these families, and it seems like it's not having much success doing that. No, not at all. And, you know, I know the news moves quickly, but issues still remain. And, you know, the bottom line is that Donald Trump needs Congress right now or the courts. He's not going to get the courts, but he does need Congress to sort of, you know, codify his executive order, which is why when this bill failed last week and Republicans, you know, kind of evinced no urgency for putting forth a standalone family separations fix, you know, you got the sense that when we get back from recess, there, you know, there's very little chance we move ahead with this, which again means that Donald Trump's executive order will, you know, dissolve because again, I don't see any judge in this country, you know, giving him the go ahead when it comes to that. So I do think it's still one big question mark, but it goes back to the fact that there's not a ton of urgency to, um, you know, confront this crisis on the part of lawmakers. Elena, thank you very much. Elena Plott there thank of the you. Atlantic, Anita Kumar of McClatchy, Jason Johnson of TheRoot.com. Thanks to all of you for your thank time. You. We're going to turn thank to you. two of